Are you consumed with fears? Do you live your life thinking, what if? The Bible says, fear not, for I am with you. Welcome to Revival Today. What's up, Jonathan Shuttlesworth? Welcome to Revival Today. So glad that you joined me. Some people have been down for so long, you probably feel like you can never get out. That's the way it's always been. That's the way it'll always be. There's a great story in the Bible, John chapter 5. There was a man who had been paralyzed for 38 years, he sat on a mat waiting for help and never got help. Almost four decades. Jesus found him, said, would you like to get well? He said, I can't, I don't have any man to help me. Jesus grabbed him by the arm, hoisted him to his feet, and instantly he began to walk. That guy was looking for a man to help him for four decades and no man ever could help him. You may have been waiting for a man to help you. The government, you're gonna be waiting a long time. He had one encounter with Jesus. It didn't take Jesus 38 years. It didn't take Jesus 38 minutes. One encounter, one touch from Jesus, and immediately, what no one could do for him in 40 years was done for him in one minute. I pray that's going to be your experience as you watch this broadcast, that you're going to have an encounter, not hear about Jesus, have an encounter with Jesus Christ and never be the same. My name's Jonathan Shuttlesworth. I'll be back with you at the end to pray with you. But before I do, I want you to watch me preach the Word of God. It's going to cause faith to come alive in your heart, and then I'll see you at the end. You're watching Revival Today. I'm preaching tonight on Jesus, the great physician. Luke chapter 4, verse 38. After leaving the synagogue that day, Jesus went to Simon's home, where he found Simon's mother-in-law very sick with a high fever. Please heal her, everyone begged. Standing at her bedside, Jesus rebuked the fever and the fever left her. And she got up at once and prepared a meal for them. As the sun went down that evening, people throughout the village brought the sick family members to Jesus. Listen to this. As the sun went down that evening, people throughout the village brought sick family members to Jesus. And no matter what their disease was, the touch of his hand healed every one. If you believe it, can you shout a living amen? amen? Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10, verse 7. Then Jesus told the disciples, go and preach to them that the kingdom of heaven is near. I don't know how much you watch the news. The less you watch it, the better. It's depressing. But everything in the world is lining up just like the Bible said. That when you see these things happening, you can know my return is near even at the door. Well, Jesus has been promising to come back for a long time. Why hasn't he come back yet? The Bible says, 2 Peter 3, the Lord is not willing that any should perish. So he's giving more time so that everyone can repent and be saved. What denomination sponsored this event? None. What denomination kicked in one dollar for this event? None. What government aid came to put this event on? None. I'm a 34-year-old, very skinny man who heard from God to rent this park and sound the alarm that Jesus is coming soon. Do I have the physical power to bring this many people? Am I in with the community leaders to put together an event like this? No. You have to look around this park 
and see 4,000 people and understand that the reason there's never been a meeting like this before is because God is looking for one last call to go to every man, every woman, no matter how big of a sinner you are, to say, you may be bound in sin, but you don't have to die in sin. You can call on the name of the Lord and be saved, and God will save you tonight. Now listen to this. Jesus gave us instructions. That's why I'm not in the church. He said, go and tell the people, all of them, whether they go to church or not. I'm coming soon. The kingdom is near. But then listen to what he said he'd do as we told them. He said, go and preach that the kingdom of heaven is near. And when you do, heal the sick. That's a command. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Well, boy, if you can raise the dead, who cares about the sick? It doesn't matter how deep your sickness is. It doesn't matter if you were born with it. God not only gave us power as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ over sickness, he gave us power over death. For Jesus said, behold, everybody say behold. Behold, I am the living one who died but look, now I'm alive and I live forevermore. But that's not all he said. And I hold the keys of death, hell, and the grave. The devil may have targeted you for destruction, but the devil doesn't hold the key. Jesus rose triumphant over death and he holds the key and he's not saying die. Tonight he says, live and I'll give you life. If you're thankful for that, take 15 seconds, clap those hands and shout unto the most high God. Come on, I don't hear anybody. Make a joyful noise. Jesus conquered death. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cure those with leprosy, and cast out devils. Freely you've received, freely give. What's the admission fee every night? Free. Any preacher that charges to hear the gospel, you don't wanna hear anything they have to say. They're not headed to heaven anyway. Anyone that makes you donate $100 for a special prayer, you don't want their hand on your body anyway. Jesus paid it all. And the gospel in 2015 is still free. Free to all that will come and drink from the waters of the rivers of life. If you're going to drink from that river of life tonight, clap those hands again and shout unto Jesus Christ. It's going to be a good night. I said it's going to be a good night. Hallelujah. Now listen, this is what separates the men from the boys. We saw that Jesus healed all the sick. Nobody has a problem with that. Yes, Jesus was a great healer. If all that was the Bible said, then we would say like they do in many churches, wouldn't it have been wonderful to be alive when Jesus was alive? But there's good news. Jesus said, when you go and preach this, everywhere you go, just like I had power to raise the dead, I tell you, heal the sick and raise the dead. I'm going to tell you a story. This took place in a city called Benin City, Nigeria, back in the 1960s. There was a 14-year-old boy named Bensonita Hosa who was in an Episcopal church. And the pastor of that church read Matthew chapter 10, where Jesus said to the disciples, heal the sick, raise the dead. After Benson heard that, 14 years old, he never heard anything else the pastor said. He said, Jesus commanded us to raise the dead? So he waited after the service, went to see the pastor. He said, did Jesus tell us we can raise the dead? The pastor said, yes. He said, have you ever done it? The pastor said, no. He said, but I can do it? The pastor said, I guess. The next day, Benson got on his bicycle, went door to door in Benin City, Nigeria, not asking if you'd like to go to church. 
He asked, has anyone died here today? It took him from 9 a.m. till 2.30 in the afternoon until finally he came to a house and heard crying. When he knocked on the door, he said, has someone died here today? The family said yes. Their three-year-old daughter in Wada had died. He sent everyone out of the room at 14 years old and prayed for Enwada. When he prayed, nothing happened. So he reread how Jesus raised the dead. But Jesus didn't pray for the dead. He commanded, come back to life. So he said, Enwada, get up. She sneezed seven times, sat up, and he called the family back in. You're going to meet a man tonight. That girl in Wada was the cook at the Bible school where he attended. Benson wasn't done. He left that house, went the next day, found another one, this time a teenage boy, raised that boy from the dead. There were 400 churches in all of Nigeria. By the time Benson Idahosa died, there were 9,600 churches that he had started. Why? A simple boy without a high school education that instead of explaining away what the Bible said, dared to believe that if Jesus said, there's power over death and he's given that power to me and you then we can take power over all the work of the devil i want to challenge you tonight don't be a skeptic don't be a modern american christian that explains away 80 percent of the bible the reason you hear me read this so much is because this book is not a motivational book this is the word of the living god paul said i am not ashamed of the gospel of jesus christ why for it alone is the power everybody shout power it is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes. If you don't believe, God can't help you. He will not force himself on someone. He's a gentleman, but I have good news. No matter who you are, no matter what you've done, no matter how sick you are, if you'll open up your heart, lift your hands, and say, Lord, I believe that you are who you said you are. I believe that your word is the power of God in print. My brother and sister, tonight in Nicetown, the power of God will touch you from the inside out, and you'll never be the same in Jesus name if that power's touched you before testify clap those hands and shout one more time unto the living God come on make more noise tonight let God hear that he's got a field full of believers somebody shout hallelujah, hallelujah. before we pray for you tonight I want to show you specifically the Bible says Luke chapter 4, no matter what their sickness, no matter what their disease, preacher, you don't understand. The doctor said only four people have this in all of the known world. They don't even know what it's called. They don't know what causes it. The Bible clearly says no matter what their sickness, no matter what their disease, or if they were possessed by evil spirits, one touch not 10 touches. Now, if you've gone to church in America, you've likely heard people say, I'll keep you in prayer. Keep me in prayer. Jesus never kept anyone in prayer. One touch from the master's hand drove out every sickness and every disease. Has Jesus changed? Has Jesus changed? Let me tell you something. America's changed. The government's changed, culture's changed, but Jesus never changes. Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, the same today, the same today, and the same forever. That means the same touch that drove out every sickness and every disease. When it touches you tonight, there is no disease, there is no sickness that can stand the touch of Jesus. You are leaving here well tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. If you believe it, clap those hands one more time and worship the Almighty God.
What do you mean every sickness and every disease? There's a chapter in the Bible, Matthew chapter 8. We call it the healing chapter of the New Testament. In this chapter, verses 1 through 17, Jesus healed every kind of sickness and disease there is. How? Every sickness and disease falls under one of four categories. And Jesus healed one out of every category, showing specific dominion over every sickness and every disease. I want you to hear me. I know with these lights, it looks like I'm just on stage. You're the crowd. If you were the only one here tonight, I would preach this no different. I could introduce you to people that were going to die from cancer and had me come to their house to pray for them. You know what I did? I brought my Bible. I had them sit in the living room and I preached for one hour on how Jesus is powerful and then prayed for them. I did not come here to put on a show. There are men and women here. You've been sick. Your life is not fun to live anymore. It hurts to move from the time you wake up till the time you go to sleep. It's painful. Disabling disease. I, I came here for this. We, we fasted and prayed. We brought pastors that carry the power of God. I've made up my mind. The devil wants to see the people of this town dead, but you shall not die. You shall live and declare the glory of the living God. God is going to make you a trophy tonight that Jesus is not dead. He is alive, and your body is going to be living proof. If you believe that, I want you to let God hear you. Take 20 solid seconds. Clap your hands. Stomp your feet. Jump up and down. But let God know you're a believer tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, 10 more seconds. Make a joyful noise. Drive the devil out. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now, please open your spiritual ears and hear this. The Bible says, Romans chapter 10, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. When I preach this to you, it's not so you can say, I enjoyed the sermon, Reverend. I'm preaching the word of God. Notice how much scripture I use in my message. I'm not trying to get you to believe in a Polish guy, me. I'm trying to get you to put your faith in the risen Savior, Jesus Christ. And as I preach this out of Matthew 8, something's going to come alive in your spirit. That substance is called faith. Faith causes you to say, though I can't see the way out, I know God has made a way for me. God has made a way for you. And his name is J-E-S-U-S. I want you on the count of three to shout that name so every devil can hear you. Every cancer can hear you. Every blind spirit can hear you. You're leaving here healed. We're going to shout that name on the count of three. One, dos, three. Shout it one more time. Matthew 8, verse 1. Listen carefully. Large crowds followed Jesus as he came down the mountainside. Suddenly, a man with leprosy approached him and knelt before him. Lord, the man said, I know if you want to, you can heal me and make me clean. Everybody say, if you want to. For I tell you any of the rest. All the devil has to do to keep you sick is get you to think, well, I don't know why God put this on me. I know if God wants to, he can make me well. I want you to notice something. Before Jesus healed that man, he corrected him, and it was recorded in Scripture so that every devil that would lie to you and say your sickness is for a greater good, God gives his hardest battles to his toughest soldiers or whatever religious crap the devil made sure got in your ears. I want you to hear the same thing Jesus told that leper. I tell you today, before he healed the leper, he corrected him. I want to. Everybody say, I want to. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I want to. I don't want you to be sick anymore. I came that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. I want to be 
thou made clean. And instantly, everybody say instantly. instantly. How long does it take God? God created the whole world in six days. He won't need more than five minutes to take care of your situation. The same Jesus that healed, man, I feel it now. You feel the whole crowd come into unity. Only Jesus can do that. I feel faith on this field. I know when you're sick for five years, 10 years, 17 years, they tell you there's no, you just feel like there's no hope, but something's coming alive in your spirit right now. That something is only resident in the word of God. It's called faith. It says you're not gonna die, you're gonna live. You're not gonna struggle. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. And I tell you, I know the devil's worked overtime to beat you down, discourage you, but it only takes one night hearing the word of God to say I shall not die. I shall live and declare the goodness of God while I'm yet in the land of the living. If you're gonna do that, one more time, clap your hands all ye people and shout with the voice of triumph. Everybody say I want to. The gods of other religions, they all say if you're sick, that's your problem. You're sick for a reason. It's not for you to question. But Jesus said, I came that you might have life. It's the thief that came to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. You have to know tonight, Jesus loves you. He heals you, not to put on a show. The number one reason why Jesus heals you is he loves you. You say, if he loves me so much, why did he let me suffer like this for so long? He has to wait. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Jesus doesn't just go around making people well. You have to let faith come alive in your heart. And just like I preached on last night, Say, Lord, I'm tired of struggling, but I believe one touch from your head, from the top of my head to the soles of my feet, will clear this disease out and I'll leave here well. My brother and sister, when you let that rise up in your heart and speak it out of your mouth, there's no devil in or out of hell that can keep you bound. He who the sun sets free is free indeed. If you're going to leave here free, go ahead, clap those hands ahead of time in faith in Jesus name I said in Jesus name Jonathan Shuttlesworth back with you in studio I'm glad you've stuck with me till this point I'm going to pray with you like I said at the beginning of the broadcast we don't pray to fill time we pray because the Bible says the prayer of a righteous man and I'm one has great power and produces wonderful results you might need a result that only God can produce Freedom from heroin addiction, freedom from pill addiction, freedom from alcoholism, healed from a sickness or disease that doctors can't do anything about. You're in the right place. Our God is the God of the impossible. He doesn't just listen to prayer. He answers our prayer. Lift your hands right now, close your eyes, and as I pray, you're going to feel the power of Almighty God come in your room and make everything well. If you're in a hospital room, God will raise you up off of that hospital bed right now as I pray. Watch. Heavenly Father, I thank you for those that have watched. I thank you that they've hung with me till this point because they've believed your word. And now as they've believed your word, let it be accounted unto them as faith and see the power that faith produces when they connect their belief in your word. I curse every addiction. I curse every sickness. Be free, be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Never to go back to that again. Father, I don't wait till I hear their testimony. I give you the praise now because you never fail. I thank you that every viewer that's sitting there, laying there, standing there with their hands lifted, I thank you that you're touching them and setting them free. Now, they will never go back to that life of bondage. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Many of you that I just prayed for, you have never made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. You've got to do that. Jesus is coming soon. I mean, you can see everything that's going on in Syria, the Middle East in general, Russia, 
right out of the pages of Bible prophecy. Christ is coming back, and you don't want to be left behind. You want to be taken and not left. That requires a simple prayer, a simple act of you stopping blaming everybody for where you're at and saying, God, I take responsibility for where I'm at. I'm sorry for my sin. So say that with me right now. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. Cleanse my heart. Make me new. Say this, I believe in my heart. You raised Jesus from the dead. I confess with my mouth, Jesus Christ is Lord and my Savior. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Where I was weak, make me strong. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, let me be the first to say congratulations. Welcome to the family of God. You and I are of the same family now. Things are going to be different. You're saved now. Your name's written in heaven, and God has made all power available for you to take this beginning that started today and ride it out to the end with full success and no defeat. Let me send you this two-disc CD set that I made just for those that pray with me on TV like you just did. It's called Things That Come With Salvation. I just produced it, and I want to get it in the mail to you. That requires you going to our website, revivaltoday.com. Click the first banner. It says, I just got saved. Fill it out completely, and I'll have this in the mail to you the next business day. It's going to tell you what you can expect to be different straight out of the Word of God. No strings attached. Shipping's free. Product's free. Where you'll never get a letter from us asking for money. We have plenty of money. That's how we're able to do this, just to bless you. We love you. I will see you next week. Make sure I hear from you. Go to that website right now. I can't wait to read what you write, and I'll see you next week here on Revival Today. We want to make sure that this isn't the last you hear from us, and most importantly, the last you hear about God. We want to give you a completely free gift. All you have to do is go to our website and look for the link. You don't even have to pay for shipping. Remember, God loves you, and we love you.